Hello, 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 and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and welcome to my show. This is Eclectic Alchemy, the Beverly Fells Jones Show, and today, as you saw in the title, we're going to talk about bullying versus being bullied. It's in the news today. It's all over the news in many times about the devastating effects. What do I want to call it? The escalation of bullying in the world today is on a much different level than when I was a child, a teenager, a young adult, a middle-aged adult, and now as an older adult. It is so vile. It is so vicious. So let's talk about it and talk about, you know, what are the types of bullying that's out there today? Now, let me put this up front. I am not an expert in the sense that I went to to college and got a PhD and, and all of that. But I'm an expert in the sense that I've spent time studying it, but I haven't gotten a degree in it. So I'm knowledgeable. But even at that, there are people who have become experts at what they do and never went to college. There are people who became experts at what they do because they've spent hundreds or even thousands of hours studying a subject. I'm looking at this subject from the point of view of a person who has been bullied in her life and may not escape this life and not get bullied again. So let's take a moment and join me in this discussion. Okay, well, welcome back. Bullying. Bullying really is a way of a person or entity to give aggressive behavior. That person or entity or group, they repeatedly and intentionally are doing things or saying things or causing to happen things that causes another person or entity or group to feel discomfort or injury. Now, a bully can use verbal attacks. They can do subtle gestures. They can do physical aggression. And in this day and age, we have the online, the cyber bullies who attack in any and all forms of social media. I didn't realize how many platforms are out there. I mean, there's platforms, I can't even remember the one, but there's, you know, there's Reddit, there's probably, I can't remember, Tittle Tattle, something, anyway. And then there's Quora, and then there's Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram, and um, TikTok, and um, Periscope. I think Periscope is still out there. But there's tons and tons of different places that people can get access online. And they tend to pick a special someone. 
they tend to choose a group or a person that they are going to give their attention to. Now, I was going to do a lot of research on different people who have been bullied and just, you know, pick some people from the past. But let me just say this. I'm not going to do that particularly. There's a couple that I'm going to pay attention to. But some people have been bullied, teenagers have been bullied. They've been body shamed on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or wherever the picture of them may have been posted or the bullies posted a picture of them and they fat shamed them. I can think of it, I know we've all laughed. I'm guilty of it too. When they do what's worn at Walmart, you remember those? Well, that's a form, I mean, of fat shaming or a form of shaming the person that whatever they had on. And so I'm going to say this, just because we don't like it doesn't mean that that particular dress in their circle isn't great. I, I particularly do not like gothic um, type of dress with the black lipstick and nails and, and all of that. But if you look at it in a different light, it's not bad looking. You know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But, we're, but that, that is a form of bullying but not at the extreme. Let's put it that way. The pictures are up and then they're down right? Well, what I'm looking at is the bullying where at school every day a certain group of kids mess with the 80-pound weakling, so to speak. We've seen that. The small guy, the nerd, the, the person who is not part of the big circle, and, you know, the big football player or the, you know, the basketball guy or the wrestler, you know, comes and and messes with the small guy. It turns their plate over. That's a physical, an intentional working to embarrass that person because they can't or won't stand up for themselves. They won't defend themselves. And they feel that they can't. Cyberbullying takes the thing of getting somebody's picture or they're putting lies out about the person or they're denigrating everything they do. And so you know that, that the person that is the most trolled person in the world, I mean trolled, and trolled is the term for, for people following you and deranging you or bullying you the most looked up, searched person in the world is Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, Princess Henry of Wales. However, what has happened and what is coming out now is that this form of bullying is really planned. It is a concerted effort to damage her reputation, to damage the way people look at her. And this was started in the United Kingdom, even before she and Prince Harry got married, straight out of Compton. You know, gang, she came from a gang area, and I'm not looking at any of the headlines right now. I'm, I'm doing this from memory. She ate these avocados, and she's causing a drought and famine. But Kate, 
Duchess of Cambridge was was eating avocados to help her morning sickness. Nothing wrong with that, huh? No matter what she did, if it was minor, she crossed her legs. They they vilified her for it. But here's one of the things that you know when a person is being bullied. That when they do something good, something great, something that is is noteworthy, it's not discussed. Or it's looked at, and I, for me, it's like it's mind-boggling that they find all these twisted things in their head, these bullies, in order to make something wrong. So what am I talking about? Well, there's the hub kitchen. The ladies or the victims from the Grenville fire there in London. The tower, worst fire ever and come to find out that it was bad materials that they were told to get rid of a year before and they were supposed to and they didn't. And so many people lost their lives and people lost their homes. And so these ladies all got together at a mosque that had a kitchen and they would cook. Now it is my understanding that just after the fire, um, Prince Charles, Prince William, and I think Princess Anne went over there and visited and did the normal PR and we won't forget you and they never went back that we know of. Megan went without fanfare she went and nobody knew that she was there. And she did that for many of her organizations that she chose. She went in private without the cameras, just went to, so that she could visit with these people and find out who they are. So with the Hub Kitchen, she went and she was cooking with these ladies and got to know the ladies. And the ladies were cooking only two days a week, and she was asking why. And you know, there were the facilities weren't up to par. They they needed money for additional food, or you know, or to upgrade the kitchen, a number of things. And naturally, based on Megan's past history with her website, the Tig, and working with different companies and being on cooking shows and doing cooking, I think, you know, visiting res restaurants and doing cooking shows, she naturally came up with the idea of a cookbook, the Together Cookbook. And she wrote the foreword to it, but she had the ladies contribute recipes and tell their family stories in the cookbook. It's a glossy cookbook. It's, I'll call it fancy. It has beautiful pictures and all of that. And when it was announced that it was coming out, it was sold out. And then it hit the shelves and it sold out. And then one reporter or gentleman noticed that this cookbook was available, and I believe he was in the U.S., and it was around Christmas time, and he tweeted it out to his thousands of followers, and it surged again. And that per cookbook netted over $500,000 in profits. But you didn't hear anything about it in the tabloids. You didn't hear anything about it. it just negative things about the hub kitchen, and I'm not going to repeat those things. 
but she and Harry and Adele and a number of other people have been to that kitchen, but you didn't hear about it. When she did the SmartWorks collection, they talked about it and royals don't do this and you know, you can't do this, but it sold out. The collection sold out to the point that there was a, more than a year's worth of clothes. It generated enough donations because her name was on it and people donated money to the organization that they were open, able to open up a second location. They have been able to work during the pandemic. These are good things, but you don't hear about this from the bullies. So the British media is it has been bullying. They have found and and solicited people to write pieces against her, negative pieces, no matter what it is. In fact, they've also been willing to pay people to lie. This is bullying at its biggest. Because those newspapers, both in the UK and Australia, have a large following. They're doing it on television. They're doing it in the papers. And they look to find ways that she slips up and, and they tell, say that she lied about something, but it's not that she lied, it's that they've twisted the truth. Bullying. Cyberbullying really is the misuse of email systems or internet for, forums, social media, blogs, whatever it is for writing aggressive, abusive, and belittling messages, statements, emails, or articles. So have you been bullied in the past? What did you do when you were bullied? Were you able to suck it in, have a stiff upper lip, or did you go home and cry and cry and cry and say, what can I do? When Megan talked about having an idea of committing suicide, and Harry said she wasn't, you know, upset, she wasn't crying and all that. She was very deliberate about how she was going to do it. And most people that I understand in my reading, they become very sure about how they're going to commit that suicide, whether it's pills, hanging, cutting, shooting, accidents, whatever. They have a plan, and she was having a plan. And thankfully, she opened up and told Harry, and they had to do something, even though she was denied. But have you been bullied? You know, when you're in a situation where bullying has become the norm, which it has become the norm on social media, people either are the targets or they, because of the anonymity that you can be behind just some avatar and some fake name, that they become bullies. Some people are bystanders. Thankfully, we have the Sussex Squad. Squaddies, I, you know, there are many who first recognized this bullying and started speaking up and making noise, making a racket. I mean, lots and lots of noise, and, and slowly people started joining. You know, I joined and, and started following and, and retweeting and because I don't, a lot of times I don't make the tweets. I usually re retweet or I make comments. But if it wasn't for the Sussex Squad, we, I don't know where Megan would be today. Hopefully, Harry would have gone through just what he did and got her out of there because he saw what happened to his mother. He saw and, and, and heard and what happened to Fergie and Sophie and anybody else that 
woman that joins that family. If a man joins the family, you don't hear anything. It's really quiet. It's the women in the family that get bullied. I was bullied as a kid. I think about it now and as well, it was a long time ago. I was probably about eight or nine. And this kid, he was a little, about, he was like a year younger than me, but he was, you know, one of those young kids that had muscles and was mean and basically came from a mean family too. But every day he would beat me up. And I'm serious. We'd be in a fight every day, and I'd go tell his mom, and, you know, I'd tell my mom, and they'd have a conversation, and then they'd talk to him, and it'd go, it'll be fine for a week, and then here he comes again. Except one day, and this is the thing, bullies, eventually your target gets tired of it, and they will turn on you just like I turned on him. We got in a fight that day. I was still afraid. I was scared. I was skinny. I mean skinny, skinny. Uh, uh, Kate skinny. I was a small little thing. And, and I was always scared. But this day we were fighting and fighting and fighting. And, and I'm, you know, normally somebody comes along and breaks us up and breaks us up. And nobody was breaking up the fight. Finally, they broke up the fight, and I had almost bit his ear off. I was tired. I got tired of being bullied by him, and I started fighting back, and they told me I got a hold of his ear, and I wouldn't let go. They finally got me to let go of his ear. Guess what? Right, he never bothered me again. I must have been a tiger. I was teased. I was, I was, just a number of things. Right, as I grew up, and there was this one other girl, and she was built like. Have you ever seen a cheerleader that's the shortest of the cheerleaders, but five foot three, five two, but lots of muscles? I forget what they call the body type, ectomorph or something like that. Well, there was this girl, and in the in the fall of the year, September, she picked on me, and we were in seventh grade, and she picked on me. We got in a fight. We wound up in the principal's office. Um, I told my story. She told hers. Oh, by the way, I was a goody two shoes, and she had been in and out of juvenile court you know, detention, and I was, again, goody two-shoes, so I didn't get any punishment. She did, but we were warned not to do it again. Okay, here comes the spring of the year of May, and she stole something from my purse, and all the students knew this, and she didn't have that before. She left, and she came back, and she had this, and I asked her, I said, you can give it back to me. I won't have any problem. I don't have your da-da-da-da-da cussing me out. And I walked away and I said, look, she said she doesn't have you. I was always passive. I'm a Libra, passive. And she, um, they said, she's got your tickets. I said, okay. So I went to see her again. I said, look, everybody's seen it. Actually, everybody knows that you didn't have the money to buy. It was picnic tickets. And I want my tickets. I don't want to go home and tell my parents that they, you know, we spent this money for all of this and I don't have it. And she hollered off and hit me. That's another one of those kind of things. Have you ever had a thing where uh, everything was in slow motion? Well, we were in this fight, oh, and by the way, where I lived and we walked to school, there were picket fences, the proverbial picket picket fences. And... We fell through this gate onto into this person's property, and we were fighting, and I saw these concrete stairs. We were about to fall, and I said, if I hit my head on there, I don't know what's going to happen. And evidently, 
slow motion, I flipped her. She didn't hit her head. I, it was like I didn't want her to hit her head, but we did it in such a way that neither one of us would get hurt. And I was in my head, I kept saying, would somebody please break this up? I don't want to be in a fight. Please break this up, break this up, break this up, break this up. And finally they broke us up. And the kids had gone in her purse and she had my picnic tickets and she had something from somebody else she had stolen. Uh, In the meantime, yes, the police came and I didn't get arrested. She did because she was known. And the kids were all telling us they had to go to principal's office. But, you know, that's another thing. But what I want to say is this. I asked the kids or asked the adults, y'all were supposed to break this up. Why didn't you break this up? Why didn't you break this up? We shouldn't have been fighting this long. And they said, because you kept yelling, get your hands off me. I'm going to kick her, blah, 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 blah. I don't remember saying that. When the bullied snaps and the bully is tired of being bullied, they are going to snap back. The other piece of that is they may commit suicide. They may, you know, wind up having to go to a health facility. There's a bad side to this whole bullying thing. So what I want to say to you is that stand up against bullying. The first time that you're bullied, you, because you've got a little bit more autonomy than Megan did, stand up for yourself. Don't back down. Even though they may be six foot and you five foot five, and they may try to beat you up, but you got, you know, a little bit of leeway if you're smaller, but, or take karate lessons, or, you know, if you got a bully at work, start documenting, you know, receipts. Start documenting. You got ways to record conversations now. Record the conversations. Think of ways that you can fight back against that bully. Adopt tactics so that you can survive not being a target any longer. Stand up against bullying. Refuse to be bullied. And if you're being drawn into the group that's doing bullying, stand up and say no. Stand up and take care of yourself. Just as Megan and Harry said on the Oprah Winfrey interview, if the royal family thought that if they could keep coming after us and keep coming after us that we would keep our mouths shut, they were mistaken. And I'm paraphrasing, but essentially that's what she said at the beginning of the interview. Well, in the last few days, we've got Christopher Boozy, who is a cyber specialist on dealing with Twitter and hate tweets and Twitter users. And he's found bots and found a concerted effort. And I know that I may not get this dropped before he does it, but he's got a report that's saying who's doing this, because this is the one of the things we've talked about so much, is who is paying for the hate that's being done against Megan. We've also said they left the island. They don't care what's going on in the UK, but these folks... These so-called royal, yes, what are they? Pirates with pet press passes are concerned because they're not making the money that they used to being the bully. So I'm going to close by saying this because I just noticed that I've been talking for a while. I know that if they had been kind and honest and what I want to say, 
um, fair, because that's all she said. I just wanted them to be fair. If they'd been kind and honest and fair and reported her successes, and I just talked about, you know, the Hub Kitchen and SmartWorks, but we got the Vogue issue. We've got, you know, uh, a lot of different things that she's done. If they'd honestly reported on them, their 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 tours, they'd still be in England, unfortunately, and still under, you know, the firm. But if they had done that, even after they left, if they did what they said they were going to do by keeping their mouth shut and, and they would become irrelevant, Harry and Meghan would not be the powerhouse that they are today. They would not be the global people on the global scale that they are today if it wasn't for the press putting them in the news every day. And for being so vile that people started saying, why? Why? This doesn't make sense. She's doing this and this and this. What, what kind of royal protocol? Well, she's allowed to rub her belly. If they hadn't made such a big deal, we all may not have been this huge Sussex squad that we are today. Of course, I'm kind of glad, in a sense, that they are here in the United States and out from under that and no more leaks of what they're doing and where they're doing it. We know about it when they're ready for us to know about it, except for the memoir. The memoir was leaked, and it didn't come from the Sussex camp. I believe it came from the publisher. Somebody at the publishing house leaked it. And hopefully the person that leaked it got fired because they weren't, that was not supposed to be an announcement till they were ready to do the announcement. So I hope that you'll put some comments below. Tell me if you've been bullied and how did you handle that bully or did you just wind up moving away and graduating from school or you know, if you had somebody at work that was causing you pain and suffering, how did you handle it? What did you do? What do you think that Meghan and Harry should do? Should they go after the other brother who sanctioned JK to release information that the male didn't even know about and didn't ask for and they weren't subpoenaed? They just gave it to him because they wanted to continue the bullying. It would seem to me that by now they would know that they lost. They've got, I know they hate the Sussex Squad with a, with a passion because Sussex Squad will not let them tell lies will not let them spread information. Drop the receipts and leave them alone. Drop the receipts. I've, I've watched some squaddies argue with these people. You can't argue with them. They put you in a circle and they, and they just say, you know, Megan is this or Megan is that. And you say, drop the receipt. And then they go on and then they, they, they keep bringing something else up. Just drop the receipt. Block them and move on. Because by not giving them any engagement, you, you kind of shut them up and it won't give them the numbers that they want and uh, the paycheck that they are getting for causing an engagement. All right, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to say thank you for listening today. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber, thank you for being here. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified. But there's another thing that I would love for you to do. Please spread this. Please share this and share um, some of my other videos that, you know, I've talked about, you know, Megan and Harry and I've talked about cooking and gardening and a few other things. Um, and there are playlists, so the Meghan and Harry ones are under the M&H Meghan and Harry um, playlist. 
So as you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so, and I will talk to you in the next video.